Hello everyone and welcome back, hope you're having a great day and we're all doing well. So the comic book for Operation Deep Freeze is already out now. Typically this comic book doesn't come till mid-season or even later in the season, however this season they've given us it at the beginning. And this has came so early that I've not even made my battle pass lore video that will be coming tomorrow, although I don't think that's going to affect anything in this comic. And this comic book takes place after the cinematic for this season in which Tuberau and Thunderbird infiltrate the Moss's base and learn that he is targeting emerald planes so we're going to read through this entire comic as we always do break it down but before we continue i do ask if you do go on to enjoy this video hit that sub button since we're so close to 100,000 subscribers and drop a like and comment on the video since it does help with the algorithm right let's get into this so this comic book starts with thunderbird and tuberau after they have infiltrated deimos's lair and this is of course on the coast of portugal so tuberau starts off by saying i'm almost through the firewall thunderbird damn i'm in we should hurry anything we can use asked thunderbird deimos left out Hours ago, he's already on his way to Emerald Plains. Thunderbird starts reading some of the information on the monitors, and it says, Eliminate high value target. Who's he trying to? And then she is cut off by a speedboat, saying, Hostiles inbound, Tuberau. We need to get out of here. We can't have a repeat of the tower. Doc needs to know. Tuberau tries to contact Doc, however, their comms are being jammed by something. Looking up at the escape route through the top of the cave, Thunderbird says, My chopper can get us clear of the interference. That's a long climb. We'd be easy targets, says Tuberau. Any other suggestions? their boat. We take it and go. So Thunderbird and Tuberau make their way over to the dock and you can see some of the Kires members standing over at the other side. Thunderbird and Tuberau swing the corner and take out a few of these enemies and now there's a full-blown gunfight happening. A bullet flies past Tuberau's head and that is when he learns that they have been flanked by someone else. This member of Kires looking different to the other ones. Kese Foda suppresses fire. I'll take care of the others, says Tuberau. Tuberau then throws his nitro cell and takes out a few enemies. However, that is when he is actually shot in his shoulder. Thunderbird and this mysterious Kirez member, who looks quite interesting, he seems to be wearing some sort of a ghillie suit on his head, start engaging in a fight. He manages to knock Thunderbird's gun out of her hand, however she charges him with a knife and stabs him in the chest. This is when Tuberau gets back up and also charges into them. As this mysterious Kirez member falls back, he sort of propels himself back off the wall and charges Tuberau, taking him into the water. Both bleeding out, this Kirez member tries to take Tuberau down with him, however that is when Tuberau plays places his Zoto canister on this Kirez member and causes him to freeze. And as you can see, when his body rises to the surface, he is completely frozen. That was a lot, says Tuberau. Let's go. I don't want to be here when more reinforcements show up. Can you drive one of these? Tuberau asks. It's not my bird, but I'll manage. You patch up. It is here when we see Thunderbird and Tuberau making their way past the Heartbreaker. This is the ship in which the helicopter which attacked Tower launched from. Doc, come in. This is Thunderbird. They seem to get a connection this time and Doc says, I hear you Thunderbird. What happened in there? That was Deimos's base of operations. We found intel. He's on his way to Emerald Plains. And that is when we cut to Doc, Rook and Mira at Hereford Base. Emerald Plains? Why? says Doc. Mission statement was HVT elimination. HVT stands for high value target. Shouting over to Rook and Mirror, Doc says, get the transport ready, we need to move. Tuberau then asks Doc, Captain, what can we do? Doc replies by saying, get back to base and tell the others. Emerald Plains is a dark site used by the council. If Deimos knows, Rainbow could be at risk. The council? says Tuberau. He's going after our oversight committee. I'm sorry we couldn't get this to you sooner. And the comic ends by Doc saying, don't be you gave us a shot. Now we just have to take him down. And with that ending, that is actually be set up for the year 9 cinematic, which we'll be getting at Sao Paulo in SI 2024. And this is going to be the big CGI cinematic, similar to the one we got at the beginning of this year, where we see Deimos kill Harry. So it definitely does seem that this year 9 cinematic will include Emerald Plains, which seems to be a location in which the council that oversees Rainbow use. And honestly, that makes so much sense. Ever since we we found out that Deimos was attacking Emerald, I was wondering why Rainbow had a training base as a country club in the middle of Northern Ireland's countryside. But now that we understand that that isn't really used for training, rather this is where the committee that oversees Rainbow, you know, use as a place of, I guess, where they do their meetings and of course maybe
maybe play golf, you know, it's a country club. This is more of a casual aspect rather than being one of Rainbow's training bases like the tower in South Korea is. And that just fits Emerald Plains into the lore perfectly. That just makes so much more sense as to why a country club would even be relevant to Rainbow. Having it as this place where all these big council members that oversee Rainbow, you know, meet at, have discussions and just relax at as well is really smart. And that also helps explain who these people are on the board at Deimos' base because yes, one was Harry, one was Sam Fisher, but then there was these politician looking guys, this guy with a briefcase wearing a suit. We didn't really know who these people were. And I did theorize that maybe this was someone high up, you know, overseeing Rainbow. And it does seem like that is the case. This is going even higher. This will maybe even help us understand who Deimos is. Because if Deimos does really want to take down Rainbow, he's also got to take out the heads as well. However, now that his base has been compromised, they clearly know where it is now. And there's no chance that he goes back to the lair in Portugal. Where does Deimos go from here? We see the Heartbreaker as Tuberau and Thunderbird are leaving. We now know that is part of Deimos is, so they can relay that information. So although Deimos again isn't at this base, he has also now lost his base because, you know, Rainbow know where it is. They can relay this to the Portuguese authorities. He's had to leave everything behind. So this is a massive loss for Deimos. However, we still don't know how big his operation is. You still have these mask figures. The one you've seen in this comic book, we also seen one in the cinematic with a similar mask as well. They seem to be more higher level Kires members, maybe sort of like commanders. I like to think that Deimos even has his own sort of dark rainbow where it's just a bunch of these ex-elite soldiers just like him and that's who these white face mask people are and if you want to take it literal these are seemingly high-ranking soldiers in the Kires Legion which have white masks and if you want to make that connotation it wouldn't be far-fetched that like, could this be some remnants or some people from the white masks I mean it, it may not be people can just wear white masks as well but the fact that the white masks are a big part of Rainbow Six Siege lore, and although they were defeated, you take one person down, someone replaces them. It couldn't be far-fetched to assume that the White Masks, who were being defeated by Rainbow, got refuge in the ranks of the Kires Legion to eventually be able to fight back and be strong enough. That would explain why Deimos has a bunch of soldiers following him and leading the lower soldiers whilst these ones wear White Masks. But I think, you know, we shouldn't rule that out of the picture yet. But yeah, we don't really know how many of these soldiers that wear White Masks. I don't want to say White Masks because you might think I'm talking about the group. We can tally up that at least what we've seen there have been two defeated, the one in the cinematic and now the one in this comic book. So I like to imagine that there's a bunch more out there and hopefully we'll maybe even see one in the cinematic. But yes, the biggest thing to take from this comic book is that Emerald Plains is being attacked. We have known that for a little while, but especially it is the committee overseeing Rainbow, which is specifically being attacked because of this. So yes, definitely expect to see Emerald Plains in this cinematic. That's going to be extremely exciting to see that. But yes, that is the comic book for Opera deep freeze be sure to let me your thoughts in the comment section below i'm gonna have a bunch of theory videos coming from this so stay tuned for that make sure you're subbed be sure to check out my other lore videos if you need to catch up i will be making another entire lore video very soon so stay tuned for that one very excited for that so have an incredible rest of your day i shall catch you all later peace